Hello, everyone. Greetings for today. Welcome to Cybersecurity in Virtual Forensic Conference 2020. I'm your anchor for today, Jasprit Kaur, and welcome to Brilliance in You. As you might know, Brilliance in You is an open community which is spread across 10 countries, and we deal in emerging technologies like blockchain, AI, ML, cybersecurity, and forensics. We did live webinars, workshops, conferences, and summits on research paper, articles, and magazines. We are an open community, and our membership is open for all you can find the link to the website and the youtube channel in the description box below for today's topic we have a special speaker who is joining us from texas and uh, the today topic is cyber threat intelligence i would like to introduce mr farhan haik mr haik is a graduate Hawk. Hawk. sure yeah. Mr. Farhan Hawk is a graduate research assistant at University of Texas Computer and Electrical Engineering Department. He is pursuing a PhD degree in electrical engineering and also worked in the area of cyber security with enormous knowledge of software technology. Welcome, for, it's a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Glad to be joined here. Thanks, so shall we start with the question answers? Sure. My first question for you, what is the threat intelligence in cyber security? Yes, so uh, to make it very simple, uh, threat intelligence would be any, any useful information uh, that you can have to prevent a, either a, prevent a, either a one ongoing attack or any future attacks. So maybe, so for example, let's say you are uh, receiving some suspicious emails about some uh, some kind of uh, source, some kind of uh, email ID, and uh, maybe that's a particular uh, attack uh, going on there. And uh, by looking at, so you get, uh, get this email now, and if, if you look at the email and you can be careful uh, by looking at the email in in that way that in future, if you get something uh, similar to this, it may be a potential uh, attack, right? So by uh, knowing the uh, knowledge of current emails, uh, whatever you have in the current email, uh, you can predict something that can occur in the future and you'd be more careful about that particular email. So this piece of information that you gather from this email that, that, that you just received, that would be a uh, part of like intelligence information. You mean that we that have to, sense. yeah. You yeah. mean that we have to be very careful about the kind of email we receive and how we respond to them. Yes. So, so I, I'm. Just, I was just giving one example of uh, an attack can be. So there are different forms of attack that can happen, right? So one uh, common attack is that called that is called phishing, which uh, if uh, which is basically is some malicious person is sending you some uh, email saying that let's say. Say you learn you own a, own a lottery or you get this prize, right? So you click on the link. So what would happen is uh, when you, once you click on the link, uh, some kind of malware will be released into your system. So the, the attacker sent you an email just to disguise you to click on that link to get into your system or get release some malware into your system, right? So that's uh, that's what I was talking about. So maybe you got some email that is suspicious, yes. and and uh, you found out that it uh, by knowledge. So so there are some analysis parts going on there. So probably some uh, threat analyst would uh, see this email. Let's uh, say it's, it would look like, like it's coming from nowhere, like it's coming all of a sudden. Maybe it's a suspicious, maybe you did not click on the link. Uh, so that uh, knowledge you gather and that you can use in the future that uh, if something similar happens in the future, you won't click on the email anymore. That knowledge you gathered from previous email you received that, that, oh, that was a similar kind, you know? Okay. Very wonderfully explained, sir. Uh, can can you describe what are the types of threat intelligence in cybersecurity? Yes. Uh, so uh, so they have uh, in industry they categorize this threat intelligence into three types. Now uh, this categorization uh, categorization is kind of like blurred or like uh, it's a loose categorization. They categorize it in some way, but it's it can vary organizations to organization or maybe person to person also. So uh, what we mean by that is, uh, so they, uh, firstly, they structured the cyber threat intelligence into three parts. Uh, first is strategic, which is means that 
is a very basic level. Uh, so what I mean by that is, so let's go back to go back to the example that I presented, right? The email example. So uh, the strategic or very basic level threat intelligence would be that uh, just a basic information that is some kind of attack is going on, a phishing attack is going on. So there's a basic level anyone can understand, like you, any person from non cyber security background can understand. That would be a strategic cyber threat intelligence, right? And the, the next one is a tactical uh, cyber threat intelligence. So it gives you a little bit more details about the attack. Probably uh, you'll see, you will tell that probably you'll be getting email uh, of some kind of deal, some kind of uh, on lottery you have won. So probably that kind of email you should avoid, avoid because that kind of email is a little bit suspicious. So this is a little bit more information so that uh, someone uh, takes and can uh, detect that particular attack, right? This is uh, uh, tactical. And on next level, uh, the, the, heart, the third one you have is, which is called, uh, uh, operational, so it, which is more elaborate than tactical. So probably in tactical uh, threat intelligence, you are giving, uh, let's say, some information, but in the uh, operational one, you are giving much more. So probably you will be giving, like, what are the text in the particular email? What are, what was the subject of the particular email? And let's say if you can guess the source, like which particular host it is coming from. Maybe that's a useful information to have. So more details. So, so it's it's just a matter of like a categorization or detail matter of uh, details. You know. So first one is for layman's like the strategy is for layman's like someone who's from who's from non cybersecurity background can understand. And then it goes down the line. You, know, you get a little bit more details in tactical, and you get a little bit more details on operational. Very informative, fair. I'll can you describe what is the role of cyber threat intelligence expert in cyber crimes? Yeah, so this uh, was uh, the job of uh, cyber threat. Uh, so basically, you can call it as a cyber threat analyst. So right. the example I told you that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the email was sent, uh, that uh, malicious email was sent. Now, how you determine this email is malicious, right? If someone has to make that call, right? So for that uh, decision making, you need someone uh, who is a cyber threat analyst. So probably he will look at the email, he or she will look at the email, he will see the structure of the email and he will be able to tell you that it's a, it's a suspicious email, uh, don't engage with this particular email, right? So mm -hmm. the person who's doing this particular analysis is the threat analysis. So that's the role of like, in terms of the example I presented, that would be the role of the cyber threat analyst. Now it can go many further than this, but this is the simplest of case. How dangerous are these threats in terms of uh, like data loss or uh, other security breaches? Yes, so firstly, uh, depends on uh, the industry. So let's imagine that uh, it's a like, um, very critical industry, probably uh, a, like say a power plant or something like that, right? So say if you, uh, an, an employee in the power plant have received this particular, has received this particular email, right? Okay. And let's say this email contains a, such a malware that it, it will cause all the systems to go down and it will cause, cause an outage. So let's say that employee clicks on that email and the whole power plant goes down. So it can, the impact can be very big, right? In this yes. particular case. So it can be very big and it also can be very simple, like uh, probably uh, maybe some email, some email you will get is uh, basically giving you some malware, which will give you some ads. Like, so you want to go to the YouTube or some other websites, right? You get some ads. So basically what happens was this ad where was pushed into your system by some other, uh, things you have done, right? Probably that, that email would be doing some non malicious or little uh, less malicious stuff like this, you know? Mm. Right. Uh, my next question for you is, what do you think about the emerging technologies like machine language play the role in cyber threat intelligence crime? Yeah, yeah. So you're talking about machine learning, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah definitely. It has a big uh, contribution for cyber threat uh, analysis. So uh, the example I gave you, right? The email example. Uh, so cyber threat analyst, analyst uh, the person who does the analysis, he can look at the email and he can tell you it's a, it's a cyber, it's a malicious email, right? And now let's say you uh, receive like 100 emails and from 100 different computers. 
Now, it would be very difficult for a person to see all the emails and find out the connection. Maybe the connections between those suspicious emails is very su uh, subtle. Like you, by looking at the, like analyzing in a person may not be if, uh, fruitful enough. So in that case, you need to have some machine-based analysis. So where, that's where the machine learning comes, you know? So the, you can anal uh, analyze this huge amount of data with, through some machine and you can make more efficient and uh, accurate decisions. Okay. Like we can uh, use the help of machine learning so that we can avoid this trend. So what is it again? Uh, your voice cut out, I mean, sorry. Uh, hello. Uh, my next question yes. for you, uh, what is the tool and framework that is used by the CTI expert to fight cyber security intelligence threats? Okay, so uh, so I'm in the US and uh, I uh, the products I'm working on is uh, basically directed goals towards the US market. So uh, we follow, uh, the US has uh, their own standards. Uh, it's called, uh, they have one organization, NIST, if you heard of it. So they provide some st uh, standards to for cyber threat intelligence. One of them would be, so they give uh, some uh, frameworks for cyber threat intelligence sharing, uh, which uh, which is structured threat information expression. So, uh, in, in short, it's called STICS. And to share the threat information, uh, they use another particular framework, which is called Trusted Automated Extents of Intelligence Information, TAXI. So these are the two current frameworks that I'm currently actively working on. But there are different frameworks, uh, like, such as uh, uh, Lockheed Martin Cyber Kill Chain, and also there is a one model called Damel model. It's a, it's a research project base. So these are the few models are there, uh, some is, uh, standard um, CTI, uh, frameworks are there but outside of us maybe there are some others but i am not uh, that much aware of those uh, frameworks but uh, definitely you will find some useful frameworks for cyber tech intelligence you have very well discussed the frameworks which are used in us and i hope that uh, these technologies will also spread in different countries as well in the future Oh, my next question. Yeah, it's, it's the open source, actually. So it's available to everyone. The point I'm saying that it is proposed by the uh, Department of Defense here in US, but it's open source, actually. Okay, that's very wonderful. Because open source gives you the freedom to use the way yeah. you like. And you, you can make the necessary changes according to your compatibility. Very well said. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I would like to ask, but what are the difficulties you face as a CTI expert, what are the challenges you have to face in dealing with yes, cyber uh, crimes? Yeah, so the main challenge would be to come up with the right questions. So you have different attacks going on in your system, right? So come up with the, what are the different useful information that can you can extract from that. So let's say if you have this, some, if you're receiving some suspicious emails, right? Now, uh, what are the factors uh, that you would be taking from that particular email that would be fruitful for you in the future? Maybe, let's say, uh, an organization doesn't care about, uh, uh, like, uh, so phishing or suspicious emails. In that case, uh, for them, uh, there's nothing beneficial for that particular uh, email. But let's uh, say if you have some other organization, they are very careful with the phishing, uh, phishing attacks, uh, which is receiving suspicious emails. And for that, uh, you have to figure out like what are the things that can be, uh, that can be used for in future. Let's say in the email, right? So how can you find out a pattern? Like how, uh, what are the source of emails? So maybe they are coming from uh, same host or maybe there are some language patterns in the email or maybe there's some uh, particular signature, particular style of designing these emails uh, that you can draw from, from that you can understand that there will be similar emails in the future. So these kind of questions, analysis questions, which is fruitful, uh, come up with this question is the, is the tough challenge for the cyber threat exp uh, intelligence experts. I can totally relate it to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Can you tell us uh, the major institutions or um, a major organization that will help you provide the certification code regarding CTI? So uh, I, I, you are asking about uh, certifications, right? Yeah, certification, but, um, like how you can become a CTI certificate? 
as far as I know, there is no dedicated uh, CTI, uh, what is called a certification exam, but certification that you can take. But uh, the most important is that you have to have the overall grasp of cybersecurity. So uh, be uh, uh, like uh, becoming aware of different cybersecurity fields or cybersecurity areas. And uh, so I think uh, there is no dedicated uh, dedicated certification for cyber intelligence per se. But you can always go for the basic security uh, certification, such as uh, Security Plus, would be a good place to start for the beginners. So basically, the idea is that you have to have a, a in-depth knowledge of cyber overall cybersecurity. So you mean that experience is must that you should keep on working on this area and with all the experiences you have, you will be able to deal with all the problems that come in your way. Yes, uh, and at the same time, you have to have knowledge. And so let's say uh, some you have different areas in cybersecurity. Maybe some people work on vulnerability side, some people work on network side, some people work on uh, authentication on that side, right? But uh, I think to be a cyber threat inter uh, intelligence analyst, you have to have a little bit knowledge of everything here because so you have to draw the connections between uh, all these uh, different aspects of cyber security and um, generally attack uh, an attack consists of the uh, uh, generally an attack uh, consists of different aspects of it. probably it's using some uh, network uh, uh, intrusion, it's using some vulnerabilities. So you have to have knowledge, little bit knowledge on everything, you know, to uh, better understand that, uh, to uh, extract the cyber intelligence. That's what I was trying to say. Like you have to be jack of all trades. And finally you will yes. become a master. Yeah, yeah, that's how, how it works actually. But you see, that's what my personal experience is, but it can, I may be wrong, but I, I found out that it's uh, that's how uh, I mean it. How that's the best way to go about it because otherwise you won't be able to see the whole top level picture of uh, what's going on uh, in your system, and then then maybe it will be your uh, threat intelligence would be very much of like a weak uh, threat intelligence. Probably you are uh, capturing one part of the attack, but you're cap you're not capturing the other parts. You know. Yes, sir. Uh, my next question is for you that what is the future job market? in terms of cyber threat technology? Uh, so the job market is pretty good. Uh, uh, so the cyber threat intelligence is kind of a new uh, field even in US. So these uh, CTI based or intelligence based uh, uh, cyber defense is kind of a, like newer concept. Like So they have organizations here learn from previous attacks that if uh, they shared some intelligence within themselves, mm -hmm it would be better for them to uh, defend again, defend in future. So they are trying to develop their own CTI infrastructure here. So I think it's growing, it's growing here also. And I think it's a, it has a huge potential to have a very big job market here in the US at least. I, I'm not sure about the other parts of the world, but here definitely it has, it has its um, needs and it has its demands, you know. But at the situation of COVID-19, like we are, uh, mm -hmm. facing a lot of threat regarding to fiber security. So do you feel that job market will increase in this area? Yes, uh, so that's the question <laughs> no one has answered, right? <laughs> but uh, what I can uh, what I can tell is that, see, uh, uh, this uh, COVID-19 thing is uh, making people like uh, work from home, right? And uh, also, they are more remote based uh, work, uh, doing remote based works nowadays. And that opens up a lot of cybersecurity problems, you know. So when you work from the home, it's uh, not that simple as uh, working from your office, having your own network and own dedicated devices. So you're working from your personal computer and you're probably using your own Wi-Fi. So there are a lot of security challenges there also. So I think remote work will be a future from here on. and. Along with that, I think the security challenges will be, uh, there will be more security, cybersecurity problems, I think. And for that, I think we need more cybersecurity professionals to uh, cope with this big, uh, huge problem, you know? So I think it's a very good field to join nowadays because I believe that it's, gonna, it's going to increase. Uh, the field is all, uh, already increasing and uh, having the situation, maybe this is, this is right now, it's a little bit slow, but I think it will pick up very soon. Totally agree with you because the future is very unpredictable right now and the world is only in the network deep days. The most of the business is working through network and computers only.
well said. Yes. Uh, yes. My last question for you is, uh, what are the kind of precautions that one should take to avoid such threats and uh, how we can fight it? What are the tools that any layman can have? Uh, in terms of working from home or? Yes, in terms of working from home and maintaining a fiber security so that they are not uh, okay. vulnerable to these threats. Yes, I think, uh, so I think it would be more on organization side to ensure security. So how, what I mean by that is that uh, every organization, organization should have their own VPNs uh, to for, the, for themselves so that employees can use that VPN at least because I don't think it's a, it's a good idea to uh, do the office work using Wi-Fi at least, uh, unless it doesn't involve anything sensitive, you know, because we never trust, uh, we cannot trust our ISPs, right, internet service providers, what they're doing, and we don't understand even. So I think for organizations, maybe they could try, if they can employ the VPNs, and if employers are able to log in from, the VP, uh, from their home into the VPNs, I think that's a good idea. And in terms of the em uh, employees, I think maybe if there's no, they're not, they're not tech savvy people, then I don't think they would can do much. But probably they can take care of some basic things. Probably not using like passwords, like one, two, three, something like that. I mean, having good passwords and all, and little bit uh, more uh, constrained on sharing sensitive information over the network. I mean, that's the best they can do. Okay. Do you think security software can play a role in avoiding such threats? What are the like top software that anyone can use to protect their uh, laptops and their data? Uh, well, data. So I think uh, firstly that I think you would have to have a backup first for the data, right? And um, I think you can, uh, the best I can do right now is that have the updated antivirus softwares having patched itself, but uh, that doesn't provide you, that doesn't protect you from the zero day, of course, but uh, yeah. that's the best you can do, have your system updated and uh, don't, uh, and also verify where you're getting your securities from, maybe some updates, maybe they are from faulty updates, maybe from attackers. So maybe be, be careful with this. So when you try to visit some websites, try to have uh, try to uh, pay attention with the website. If it is a legit website, legitimate website or not, look at the URLs. Probably to find out like even if you're getting some software for some, or be careful with uh, what you're getting because uh, you never know unless what you're getting from unless you are not hundred percent sure. So basically, you have to be careful. You have to have that security mindset. Uh, so we have to understand that. Um, like, you know, if you know the zero trust policy, like trust no one, something like that. So probably you have to be cautious of doing everything uh, and uh, have the basic system updated. Totally true. To sum up, like we have to be on our own. We have to maintain a good software security and use right kind of password and uh, update our antivirus software very well. Yes. Yeah, and also look for the legitimate websites and legitimate things uh, don't try to do some like uh, cheap uh, free versions uh, maybe some free cheap versions uh, probably they will be having some errors you know so i think just go for the legitimate software and all you know definitely a very important point noted <laughs> thank you so yeah. much mr farhan for sharing this wonderful information with us it was a very interactive session and you have shared all the details that our viewers can use to protect their software, to protect their data from the threat and avoid any kind of mishappening. Thank you so much. And it was a pleasure having you here. Yeah, thank you for having me. And I was uh, very delighted to be here. And uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Bye. To all my viewers, I would like to tell you all, thank you for being a part of Brilliance in You and keep supporting us. You can uh, follow us through the YouTube channel and subscribe the channel, click the bell icon below. And I would like to thank you all for being a powerful support for our organization. Keep on supporting us, stay inspired and stay happy.